how to do a yin yoga practice. This video provides a brief explanation of the principles of the yin style of yoga. It will differentiate this deep, juicy practice from the more muscular yang styles of yoga. For more details on the practice, visit yinyoga.com. Yin yoga is a very simple practice. But as you'll discover, simple does not mean easy. This can be quite challenging. You can go very deep in the yin style of yoga. So what we're going to talk about is the principles of the style of practice. But before we get into how we do the practice, just know that yin is a very quiet and a fairly cool practice. So it's okay to put on layers while you do the practice. You can have socks on, have an extra shirt. We're not going to generate any heat internally in the practice. So you might want to heat up the room, make sure it's comfortably warm, have blankets handy. And also before you begin the practice, Grab any blocks or bolsters that you think you will need during the practice, just so you don't have to get up and run around. And also, if you're doing the practice by yourself, it might be useful to have some sort of a timer, just so you can stay for the same length of time on both sides of a pose. If you're doing a twist, you'll stay for three minutes on one side, then you'll notice stay for three minutes on the other side. As you get more advanced in the practice, you probably won't need a timer. You'll just know by paying attention to your body how long you should marinate and when it's appropriate to come out. But in the beginning, it's good to have a reminder, something that will let you know that time's not up yet, or hey, you know, time to come up. Now we can look at the yin yoga practice as being comprised of three main principles. The principle of playing your edge, of becoming still, and holding for time. And as we explore each one of these principles. You can actually do this while in a, in a pose. So you might want to come into, say, a butterfly pose. Sit up on something, make sure your hips are nice and high. That'll allow the hips to tilt a bit. Bring the soles of your feet together, and then move the feet comfortably far out in front of you. And the word comfortably in yoga it may not mean the same thing as you normally think of comfortable, but you just want to get to a place where you feel something. Now we're ready for the first principle, which is called playing our edge. Whenever we come into the pose, we just want to come to a place where we feel something, where there's a challenge. This is our first edge. So we come forward until we feel something. Now every body is different, so everyone's going to have different sensations. Your edge will be very different than somebody else's. For example, in the butterfly, most people tend to feel this along the spine. Some people feel this through the outside of the hips, other people feel it through the inner groins, some people feel it through the upper back, the neck, the shoulders. It's fine. Wherever you feel that first point of resistance, of tension, just go there. And then the second principle takes over, called stillness. We become still. Now the quality of the edge will change with time. After we just become still at our first edge, and we're holding here for maybe a half a minute, a minute or two, the body will open up and you'll be invited to go a bit deeper. So in that case, it's okay to go a little bit lower. In the butterfly case, you're allowing your head to drop down towards the heels. And so we find that second edge. So again, yin is very allowing, it's very accepting. You just go to where you stop, become still. This means we're not pulling ourselves. We could probably force ourselves to go even deeper if we wanted to. But again, yin is passive. We're not using the muscles. We're just surrendering to gravity. So we just allow ourselves to hang down at the edge and then wait for the body to open up. Now the edge is really the Goldilocks position. If you remember Goldilocks, she was a very picky yogi. In fact, in her second book, Goldilocks at the Yoga Studio, we discovered that Goldilocks never liked to go too deep into a pose nor did she want to be too shallow. She always wanted to be where it was just right. Not too hard, not too soft. Not too hot, not too cold. So she was very Buddhist in that way. And so in the same way, we want to find that Goldilocks position where it's not too much. We're not really straining and it's not too little. The way to know if it's too much is if you start to experience any sensations that could be characterized as painful. Anything that's sharp, burning, or anything that feels even electrical or tingly in nature. When you feel tingly in the body, it's usually a sign that you're perhaps compressing a nerve by somewhere. The sciatic nerve, the brachial plexus, this will start to 
send tingly feelings through the legs, through the fingers. Those are not good signs. Tingling is usually a sign that you're too deep and you need to back off of it. If you ignore tingling, eventually you could damage the nerve permanently. So don't be where it's too much. Don't be where it's painful. If you get to the point of pain, then the body's going to tighten up to protect itself. And that's the opposite of what we want to have happen in a yoga practice. We want to loosen it, to relax into the shin. We know it's not deep enough if you don't feel anything. So you're up here and you don't feel anything at all, you're not at an edge. So you want to keep going. And as mentioned before, the edges will move. The second principle, stillness, simply means that once you arrive at an edge, you don't move. You remain still. Now as mentioned, there are two exceptions to that principle. It's okay to move to go deeper if the body does open up, if you're invited to go deeper. And it's appropriate and it's okay to come up if you're too deep, if you start to experience the sensations of pain. But other than that, we just stay still. And there are three qualities of stillness that we like to cultivate in the yin yoga practice. The first is stillness physically of the body. And we do this for a couple of reasons. When the body is still, the muscles don't have to work. Every time we move, we're using muscles to move. And in the yin practice, we're trying to let the tension of the pose soak in deeper past the muscles into the deeper connective tissues. And if every time we're engaging the muscles, that will take the stress off the deeper connective tissues, which doesn't make this into a yin practice. It makes it more into a yang practice. So we become still so the muscles can soften. The second advantage of the physical stillness is when the muscles are quiet, they don't need as much energy. They don't need as much oxygen, which means our breath can become quiet. So a stillness physically leads to a stillness in our breath or a quietness in the breath. This doesn't mean that we stop breathing. It just means we allow the breath to slow down if that's what it wants to do. The stillness in the breath is important because it leads to the third quality of stillness, and this is stillness of the mind. The yogis long ago discovered that the mind and the breath work together, like fish in a school. If you ever watch on National Geographic TV, a school of fish, when one moves, the other moves. When the other moves, one moves. And it's very hard to still the mind by just using the mind, just by willpower, to stop in the thoughts. That's the practice of the samurai Zen warrior, to just use fierce willpower to still the mind. Well, the yogis long ago discovered a backdoor to the mind, the breath. When the breath is quiet, the mind is quiet. You might notice this in life. Whenever you really need to concentrate, you'll notice what happens to the breath. For example, if somebody said to you suddenly, listen, do you hear that? Chances are when you're listening, you will hold your breath. It's that moment between breath, which is a moment between your thoughts, when you can really be open to what's happening, that deeper stillness of the mind. Or if you watch somebody trying to thread a needle, and they're concentrating, they'll be sticking their tongue out, and as they try to thread the needle, they're holding their breath. So the breath and the mind move together. If we allow the breath to become quiet, the mind will also become quiet. So the second principle of stillness applies on many different levels. We become still physically, the breath naturally slows down, becomes calmer, and then the mind quiets. The third principle of the practice, once you've come to an edge, once you become still, is time. Time is the magic ingredient in the yin style of yoga, physiologically. Time is what stresses the tissues. Technically, what we're doing to our tissues in yin yoga is applying traction. Traction is a long-held stress applied to the connective tissues. More important than intensity, more important than how juicy the pose feels, is how long we stay in the pose. So time is really the magic ingredient if we're targeting the physiological benefits of this practice, the deeper connective tissues. Now, time is relative. For some poses, like butterfly, you can stay here for a long time. It can be five minutes, ten minutes. Depends on your unique anatomical structures. For other poses, like the dragon, 
you might only be in one phrase of the dragon for maybe a minute or so. Camel and some other more yang-like poses might require you to stay in the pose for less time. But the principle still applies. The longer you can stay in the pose without pain, the more benefit you're going to get from the practice. Now there is another suggestion. You could consider this the fourth principle of practice. In it, tells us how to come out of the pose. We always want to come out of the poses slowly. So whenever we're finished, we slowly ease on out. Practice being a jinster, somebody who does everything deliberately. And for some of the poses, you're not going to have a choice. You're going to feel very much like an old person. You're with age about five or ten years while you're in the pose. So you slowly come out and then enjoy the sense of release, the flooding of the chi as you move into a little counter pose after the posture. These three principles of yoga can actually be applied in the yin or yang style of yoga. We come to an edge, we become still, and we hold for time. The difference in the yin and yang styles is how much time you'd hold. But in both styles of yoga, you want to come to an edge. Remember Goldilocks, not too much, not too little. You become still physically, allow the breath to just flow, and you become still mentally. And then, whether it's five breaths or five minutes, you hold for the time of the pose. Once you've mastered these three principles, then you're ready to go deeper. Remember, the real yoga is what you can't see. Beyond the shapes, beyond the postures that we contort our body into, the real yoga is taking us deeper. It's into awareness of the breath, allowing the breath to flow through us. And then we become aware of the body, the sensations, the feelings, we become aware of the heart, the emotional feelings, and we also start to become aware of our mind, the nature of the thoughts that rise and fall. All these things we simply allow. We're not trying to change them, but we are trying to notice them. This gets us very deep now into the yoga practice, but it begins with these very simple principles. So again, whenever you come into any pose, just come to that edge. Become still and hold for time. You'll start to experience the yin side of your mind.